Here we're going to look at identities and something called equating coefficients. And it's basically built around the knowledge that we've already got around expanding brackets. So you can see here this is an identity, which means that both uh, expressions are equal to each other for all values of x. Whatever values of x you substitute into the left-hand side, you will always get the equivalent answer from the right-hand side. Hence why we use the fancy identity symbol in the middle there. Okay, so now we're going to look at another identity, but this time there will be some missing items which we need to figure out. So you can see you've got missing values here for uh, A and B. And you might be able to figure this out by, by just looking at it, um, but I'm going to go through the working out because I think that sets us up nicely for the later problems. So if I expand the left-hand side, I will get 5ax plus 15, and that's identical to 20x plus b. And now what we're going to do now is what's called equating coefficients, which is that if I look on both sides, I can see that there are two x terms. And if I know that 5a here must be equivalent to 20, it's identical on the other side. So effectively what I'm saying is that 5a must be equal to 20, and that means that a has to be 4. The other bit can just be equated just by looking at it. So 15, oh, wrong button. 15 is equivalent to the numeric term on the other side, the bit with no algebra in it. So therefore I can just put those two equal to each other um, and therefore say that B is 15. Okay, so here's another one. We've got um, both of the unknowns have appeared on the left-hand side. Um, this time, one of the things I'm going to do before I start here is I'm just going to put all of them in an, an easier order to understand. So I'm going to put all of the x terms uh, together on the left-hand side. You don't need to, but again, it, it probably puts us in a good place for what comes later. So 3x plus bx, those are both of the terms with uh, an x in on the left. And then a plus 14 is identical to 9x plus 11. So now I'm going to do the, the equating coefficients thing. So this time I've got two terms on the left-hand side with uh, x in, that's these two. So I'm going to equate these. So 3x plus bx must be equal to 9x. And now I can either write this out, you can probably do this by looking at it here. Um, 3x plus bx to give you 9x, well then b's got to be, th b's got to be 6. I could have written that out more formally, but I probably don't need to at this point. Um, then also putting the, the terms without any algebra in, just the numeric terms together, we've got a plus 14 must be equal to 11. I will write, write that one out just to make sure we get this one the right way around. a plus 14 is the same as 11. Um, so if I solve that, subtracting 14 from both sides, I get that a is negative 3. And that's the values of a and b found. Okay, so now we're going to look at one involving double brackets. So we've got some knowledge here uh, that we can put into play for expanding double brackets. So we'll do that first of all um, to the left-hand side. So we'll just expand this set. x squared plus 5x plus ax plus 5a. And that's all identical to x squared plus bx. Subtract 15. So now this is a little bit trickier because we've got a little bit more thinking to do because there's a few more terms lying around. So first of all, I need to look at what I can put together. Now, the x squared part, there's no numbers. There's nothing for me to find with these two. So I can almost ignore these temporarily. They're not going to help me. Um, the next part to look at will be the terms with an x in. So if I look at these here, 5x and plus ax, I'm going to, in a minute, equate these to this bx on the right-hand side. But look at what will happen when I try and do something here. 5x plus ax equals bx. Well, because there's two unknowns in this uh, single equation, a and b, I'm not going to be able to solve this yet. I need to know what either a or b are. So I can't actually do anything with those yet. But what I can do something with is the numeric terms that are on the end. So if I highlight these, I can do something with this one, which is that I know that 5a is equal to uh, negative 15. 
So if I know that 5a is negative 15, then dividing both sides by 5 tells me that a is negative 3. Um, and now I know that, what I can do is put this back into this expression here. So now where I had 5x plus ax equals bx earlier, I'm now going to have 5x subtract 3x equals bx. And therefore, by inspection, we can see 5x take 3x will give me 2x. 2x is equal to bx, and therefore b is going to be 2. Again, that's one of those questions you might have been able to, to spot that at the start using the relationship that we know um, from factorising, um, which is that you could spot here that these two numbers immediately have to multiply to negative 15. So you could have known that that was going to be negative 3 um, right from the start of the question. And then negative 3 add 5 will give you 2. Um, if you couldn't spot that's fine, just, just work through it. Um, but there was a little shortcut you could have taken there. So here's another example. If, you, if you're happy with what's happened so far, try and give this one a go and then come back and check the video afterwards. Otherwise, I will guide you through this one as well. So expansion of the left-hand side, so we can line it up and make it look a little bit like the right-hand side. Um, give me a few more terms this time. So we're going to have 5ax squared, which is that. And then we're going to have 20x from that one. And then we're going to have a, b, x, and 4b. And that's all identical to 15x squared plus cx subtract 8. Notice here that we've got um, three unknowns, a, b, and c, to go and find as well. So um, let's go around highlighting the stuff that goes together and seeing what we can work out. So one of those, if you don't panic and just slowly work through this, it, it should happen for you. So we've got... First of all, the x squared terms, there is something we can find here because we've got this 5a on the front of this first bit. 5ax squared is equal to 15. Um, hopefully you can see that means that a's got to be 3. Um, if you can't, then, then write it out somewhere. Just try and help you to spot it. 5ax squared is equal to 15x squared. Therefore, it must be true that 5a equals 15 and then a is 3. So that gives us the value of 3. I'll just make a note of these as I go, because I'm in danger of running out of space on this page. Um, so now we can go and have a look and see what else we can work out. Um, again, I'm going to have the same problem with the, the next set of terms. So if I try and put these together to find that, I'm not going to be able to do so quite yet, because I still need the value. I still need one of the additional values. So if I wrote it out, but currently I've got 20x plus a b x but i haven't got a anymore because i already know that a is three so i'd have three b x equals cx and again i still can't solve that yet i can't do anything here because i've got two unknowns in one equation so i'm going to have to equate the other part to get this next bit so i'll equate these two which will get me the value of b so we can say that 4b is equal to negative 8 so 4b equals negative 8, and b has got to be negative 2. So that's got me two of the parts. Um, so now I can use both of these two pieces of knowledge to put them back into here, and that will help me find c. So now I'll rewrite this, 20x plus, and now I've got a, b, x. a, b are here, so a times b it will be 3 times negative 2. Uh, which is negative 6x, so I shouldn't have written a plus there, because I'm going to have negative 6x uh, equals cx. 20x takes 6x, so leaving me with 14x. 14x equals cx means that the value of c is 14. Done. Okay, so if you're happy with the last one, uh, try and give this one a go. It's just slightly different. Um, if not, Again, I'll, I'll take you through this, but it's really just a matter of not panicking, just working through this line by line until you get somewhere where you can um, produce uh, a solution. So first thing to do, left-hand side, is to expand this. Um, ignore the A for a second, and we'll, we'll just expand the brackets here. Remember, x plus 3 all squared isn't in expanded form yet, so it needs to be written out. I'm just going to leave the right-hand side temporarily, so... Um, 
expansion of that will be x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9 with the b left lying around on the end. I'll just tidy up, put these two terms together. So I'll get x squared plus 6x plus 9 plus the b on the end. I can then run through the whole thing uh, with this a that's outside. So I'll get ax squared plus 6ax plus 9a. That b is still hovering along on the outside. So now I can, after all that, just bring my right hand side back in as 3x squared plus cx plus 73. So hopefully we've got something now that we can start to equate, start to put together and start to, to figure out the value of. So we'll get the highlighters out. First up, we'll go with this one. That should be a fairly straightforward equating job here because if ax squared equals to 3x squared, then we can say uh, that a has got to be 3. Um, that, when I, I can use that then when I come to this next part. So I'm going to be equating these parts. So the terms, that's not true. Let me go back a second. So we're going to find the terms with an x in, which is that one. This next one that I just highlighted doesn't have an x in, so I shouldn't have highlighted it. Um, and this one here. And you might be thinking that I can't solve this because it's an equation with two unknowns, but remember that we already know the value of a from a second ago. So we know that a is 3, and therefore we know that 6a is 18. And if 18x equals cx, then that means that c is going to be 18. Now we've got a and c, um, we will be able to go back in and find um, b as well. So find the, the numeric term on the end, 73 will be equal to all of the things on the left-hand side that don't have uh, any algebra in, just the numeric term. So 9a plus b then is going to be equal to 73. And again, don't panic here if you're thinking, oh, I can't solve that because it's got two unknowns in. Your chances are you'll already work something else out further down that can help you. And we've already got A as 3 here. So if I substitute A in the value of A as 3, I've got 27 plus B to give me 73. Um, I'll subtract 27 from both sides. Um, and that will give me the value of B. So therefore B is 73 take away 27, which is 46. And therefore, I've got A is 3, B is 46, and C is 18.